if it is true that in law we must hold the citizen to the standard of a rational man, of a man who possesses free will and is able to control his actions, that we should, we must uh, accept this before we would impose punishments. But we come to the problem of, of children and of uh, persons who are insane, and obviously we wouldn't hold these persons to the same uh, standard, or would we? That's something I wanted to ask you. And also, in particular, the uh, coming trend for uh, persons accused of murder or of crimes to plead temporary insanity. Would you comment on the problems of insanity in the law, and particularly of the plea of temporary insanity? Well, that is really a technical matter. First, in principle, I would say that certainly a minor, a child, or an insane person cannot be held responsible for his actions in the same way as a normal, healthy adult. In the case of an insane person, one would have to incarcerate him or put him out of circulation in the sense of preventing him from committing further crimes, but one could not in impose on, upon him a punishment which is intended and deserved only by the man who is conscious of his actions. Now the issue of temporary insanity is a very tricky one, because here on the one hand this would depend really on the science of psychology, which is far from developed, which is nothing but a jumble of uh, contradictory hypotheses at present. Strictly speaking, it would have to be up to a psychiatrist if uh, sci uh, science of psychology had reached the stage where objective principles could be defined to establish, to begin with, the state of real insanity and then such a phenomenon as temporary insanity. A temporary insanity does exist. For instance, in the sense of if a man under the stress of violent emotion loses control of himself and commits some crime which he wouldn't have done with conscious premeditation, that constitutes a certain mitigating circumstance, but not always, because the question arises, what uh, did the man do to himself psychologically to reach such a state where he loses complete conscious control and becomes temporarily dangerous so that he could commit murder under stress of uh, strong emotion. Here the question of moral and legal responsibility is much more complex than in the issue of actual psychosis. And uh, it would be an issue in part depending on scientific knowledge which is not available at present. In that sense, pleading temporary insanity has to be allowed to some extent since such issues do occur but the technical means of how to determine it and when it is proper or improper is uh, too complex a question at present. I would not venture even a hypothesis in that realm because we have too little knowledge.